it's a war for our mind, for our heart, and for our spirit. And whether people realize this or not, we're all warriors now. Hey friends, I notice I'm having more energy and mental focus when I take this new Remedy C60 Evo. The C60 Evo organic olive oil feels wonderful. I take it on a spoon in the morning and I enjoy the benefits all day long and have much deeper sleep at night. C60 Evo oil is great for your pets as well. They also have very potent face and lip serums and hair renewal kits that really work. Check out the testimonials on their website and see what others are saying. Invest in yourself, your pets and those you love with C60 Evo Breakthrough Remedy. Because you're worth it. Enjoy discounts for bundle products, monthly subscriptions, and cases. Use our code Inspire Channel for another 10% off at checkout. Hey, hey, Inspire Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, how's it going? It's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I want to go into the nine qualities of a warrior, and you can say nine qualities of a spiritual warrior. But I believe every true warrior needs to have these qualities and every true warrior hopefully is a spiritual warrior. So let me get into this here. The first principle, first quality that every warrior needs to have is awareness. Sharpen your awareness every day. You are at war with the darkness of ignorance. Pay attention to your intentions, your thoughts, your speech and your actions. This is really, really, this is one of the key points that drives everything else. It's where is your awareness? Where is your consciousness? Realizing that there is a part of you that is always observing everything around you. It's the attention part of you. And most people live by default, which means they are not in charge of their awareness anymore. Their awareness is guided and distracted, um, you know, or, or is distracted. You know, they're being distracted from being aware by all kinds of forces outside of them. So becoming aware is equal to being present in the moment. Let me repeat that. Becoming aware is equal to being present in the moment. You cannot be aware if you're not present. If you are all over the place, there is no way you can be aware. So this is really, really important, right? Pay attention to your intentions, your thoughts, your speech, and your action. All right, let me go to the second quality here. The second quality is courage. The path of the spiritual warrior is not easy. You will face danger, uncertainty, and adversity. Have the courage to meet these challenges head on. Now let me read this again to you because a lot of people in our comfort-driven world don't want to hear this. The path of the spiritual warrior is not easy. It isn't. You will face danger, uncertainty, and adversity. Have the courage to meet the challenges head on. Because you are in a heightened state of awareness because you perceive and because you are able to read and see things for what they are your path will never be easy it doesn't mean it won't be fulfilling it doesn't mean it won't be interesting it doesn't mean it won't be purposeful but it will not be easy easy in terms of how do you coast through life the easiest is probably the path of ignorance right the things you don't know they don't bother you but the things you do know might, and they might inspire you to take action, and they might inspire you to take charge. So it requires courage. Let me move on to the next quality that is needed. Discipline. Boy, this is one people don't want to hear about. Never ever. You must control your impulses, desires, and emotions. Show up every day, especially when it's uncomfortable. There is no substitute for discipline. I'll read this again because I know this is something that a lot of people struggle with. You must control your impulses, desires, and emotions. Show up every day, especially when it's uncomfortable. There is no substitute for discipline. The thing with the impulses and the desires is that a lot of people think eventually they go away. They don't. We have instincts, right? Instincts are our lower form of consciousness, but instincts ultimately, if we do not have higher consciousness, still assure survival right? The instinct for procreation, the instinct for feeding yourself, all these instincts assure survival. They don't assure any kind of higher experience or consciousness. Because we are conscious and aware beings and because we have higher consciousness, we must learn to control these impulses and be the master of them. There is no substitute for discipline. And what is discipline? People mistake discipline for effort. Effort, I say, is doing or is effort is making yourself do something that you don't want to do 
for an outcome that doesn't really excite you either. That's different. Discipline is knowing it's the right thing, knowing it leads to a good outcome, but the action in and of itself might be challenging to do for you. You might have to use discipline and the power of your will to show up for it, right? That's where discipline is required. My background, I grew up as an athlete, as a professional athlete. And my sport, my main sport, I had many, but my main sport was alpine skiing. That means my season was from November, give or take, till March, maybe early April, right? So short season. I had about four months of competition out of a year. So that's one third, two thirds of the year. I had to show up every day with a lot of discipline for something that was far down the road, right? Because when I would sit on my bicycle and doing 70, 80 miles a day, or even more sometimes, there was no immediate gratification in that. I, I wasn't going down the slopes. I wasn't doing my sport. I was doing something else to be ready, to be prepared, to be strong, to have endurance and all these things. And that's when discipline is required. Discipline is the showing up everyday part and you need it, trust me, as a spiritual warrior and everybody else, whatever it is that you are set out to accomplish, you need discipline. All right, let me move on. To, we have relentlessness and relentlessness is something that is often mistaken for something else, but be relentless with false beliefs, ego delusions and excuses. Self-importance is the enemy of enlightenment. You must kill this enemy with a thousand cuts. I'll, I'll read all of them twice because I think they're important to hear. Be relentless with false beliefs, ego delusions, and excuses. Self-importance is the enemy of enlightenment. You must kill this enemy with a thousand cuts. The ego and self-importance are how we are being sed seduced into a life of instant gratification, a life of uh, no impulse control, a life of comfort, and delusion ultimately, right? And everything that we're being shown from the mainstream, everything is about staying in our comfort zone and feeding our ego desires and delusion. And this leads to this whole idea of self-importance, self as the experience that we're having. You know, you could say this ego self is, you know, it's John Nolan, it's what I, whatever, it's a husband, a father, a songwriter, but the self-importance is my temporary experience here, my human experience is so important in my comfort, my gratification, all my desires are so important that I will forsake my morals. It doesn't matter as long as I get what I want right now. And be, you have to be relentless with that ego. This self-importance really has to be killed. It has, it's something that has to be mastered. And there is a true self, there is an, an eternal self, the spirit self, that must take the number one rank in your life. It must become the leader of your ship, right? And all the other needs that we have must rank lower. And the self-importance part, that's the discipline that you need to show up every day and be relentless with that, right? The first time when you realize them, yes, you can have compassion with your past self. Yes, of course. But after that, you need relentlessness. No more cuddling yourself. No more finding excuses for why it's okay to have these uh, self-importance desires. It isn't. It is the death of you who you really are and you need to be relentless with that. All right, moving forward. Patience, right? <laughs> uh, this plays right into the ego thing. It does not matter if it takes a day or a thousand years. Only your ego needs it now. You are part of a much bigger play. Do your part, the rest will come. It does not matter if it takes a day or a thousand years. Only your ego needs it now. You are part of a much bigger play. Do your part, the rest will come. So in our world, patience is a virtue and a value that almost nobody develops anymore. Nobody has anymore. Everything needs to happen instantaneously. And, and this is the ultimate uh, instant gratification addiction tool. It's, it's the phones and, you know, the Internet, all these things. Patience is really just the gateway to the real feeling that is required here. Patience is what you learn until you feel the true purpose of who you really are. Then you don't need patience anymore. Because when you are on purpose, when you really live your life according to your purpose and your skills and your talents and what you were destined to do, then patience isn't needed anymore because you're always on time. It's always the right time, right? But patience is the learning curve until you get there. So for a while, 
you just have to really pr you know practice it and go okay it is okay i accept this moment i'm showing up for this moment i accept it eventually you won't need it anymore i i rarely find myself needing patience because i feel like i am on purpose i live my life on purpose okay moving on to the next one number six gentleness we're talking about the nine qualities of the spiritual warrior or the warrior in general and i want to say these qualities are not complete they're not a complete list of course and even the order you know it doesn't really matter all these qualities are equally important be strong enough to remain gentle water can come in big waves or gentle drops you must be like water always stay in touch with your heart's true kindness and soft nature i'll read this again gentleness be strong enough to remain gentle be strong enough to remain gentle it's not a paradox water can come in big waves or gentle drops you must be like water always stay in touch with your heart's true kindness and soft nature the gentleness part for me is when you are really in touch with your true spirit that is what guides you it's a gentle nature and this gentle nature lets you know which quality is most needed right now water in and of itself is neither dangerous it will always use the path of least resistance to get to its destination but it doesn't mean it won't use any resistance it uses the path of least resistance and gentleness is understanding that you are much stronger in a state of allowing than you are in a state of resistance there are actually there's a great exercise that we do at the yada retreat by the way i'm going to talk about that in a moment here but there's a great exercise that everybody always has a huge aha moment with when they experience this the the difference between allowing and resistance my goodness they'll never forget what that feels like again and gentleness is a state of allowing it's the allowing for solutions to come in it's the allowing for the flow of life and it is required for everybody but especially for the spiritual warriors out there okay number seven determination <laughs> you must be determined to walk alone if necessary the majority is usually wrong don't let your fear of loneliness become stronger than your knowing of the truth i know this is a big one for a lot of you out there so i'll read it again you must be determined to walk alone if necessary the majority is usually wrong don't let your fear of loneliness become stronger than your knowing of the truth Determination is really needed when you're faced with worries and doubts and when there's, you know, opposing views. And these opposing views might not bother you at first, but the stronger, the louder the voices become that oppose your view and the truth you know to be true, the more determination you're going to need to continue walking your path even if there's nobody next to you. And this is something that all of us have experienced or some are still experiencing times where we feel very alone but yet we know in our hearts that what we say what we know and what we express is the truth and in order for you to be able to walk that path on your loneliest days among other things you will need determination you will need to be determined it's a single mindedness it's a kind of laser sharp focus that keeps you on the path very 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 important all right number eight honor a very very important one has been very misconstrued but the spiritual warrior must always honor his divine origin his principles and his word honor is doing the right thing when no one is looking we talked about this at the meeting i, I mentioned earlier saturday night the spiritual warrior must always honor his divine origin his principles and his word honor is doing the right thing when no one is looking so this to me is highly important um, because as I said, honor is something that has almost been erased from our vocabulary and erased from our culture. Few people have honor in what they do and who they are. And honor to me is, as I said, really being true to who you are, your principles and your morals, your values, your word, keeping your word, even if it is more convenient not to. Honor is doing the right thing when no one is looking, literally. That is what honor is. If you can look into your own eyes with honor, and if you know that you are walking, yes, Wayne Peak uh, integrity, a good uh, addition for me to honor. You must walk your path with integrity and absolutely aligned with your values, your principles. Honor means to keep your word, that if you agree to do something, if you say you will do it, you, you do it even and especially when it's uncomfortable and inconvenient, right? The last one here, and of course, 
it could be first it could be in the middle it's it's the basis for everything love the essence of a spiritual warrior is love every thought and every action must be rooted in it shine your love into the darkness of ignorance and transmute it let me say this again while montana is going a little crazy in the back here the essence of a spiritual warrior is love every thought and every action must be rooted in it shine your love into the darkness of ignorance and transmute it love is a basis for everything that we do anyways i would go as far as to say that every being wants to be loved and to love that's really what this whole journey seems to be about in so many ways is all of that and when you know that all of your actions come from love there's only two places it can come from all your actions and decisions can come from love or they come can come from fear there's there's only the two options ultimately now you can say other words as substitutes for love and fear but it still all boils down to either love or fear people make choices out of love or fear and the choices out of fear lead to more situations of fear that warrant fear that provoke fear and they lead to more fearful life situations the choices that are made from love lead to more loving situations in your life that's really really easy to understand but the warrior the warrior that is conscious the warrior that knows is a warrior must act from love it must all be rooted in love it can't be vengeance it can be hatred it cannot be those lower frequencies because that will lead to more of it there's a difference even in the most extreme situations there's a huge difference between murdering and killing right there might come a time in your life in my life in our life where even taking a life might be part of our journey nobody of us wants to do it but if the situation for some reason warrants it and if for some reason it would will become necessary the love must still be there either because you're protecting something or someone you love or protecting yourself and that warrants that then it's a different thing than killing with hatred and with vengeance it's a very different thing right we must distinguish we must go even in our minds into these situations so we get to know this warrior within this is why this is so important to me because the war is happening on all levels as i've said the war is happening and and so much of it is happening in the digital space right or where it's expressing itself but it's happening on all levels and we must know who we are before we can approach the enemy right and then we get to know the enemy what and who is the enemy what is its purpose what is its goal so all of these things are highly important to me as i said the list is not complete and you all have listed some wonderful qualities here that i would you know i'm going to go through but these are things and qualities that i'd i'd encourage you to save this video and and go through these slides you know even if you don't want to listen to me just go through these slides and internalize them meditate on them show up for your journey every day don't get seduced into this false comfort into the false illusion of not being fully present for your life someone else will take care of it happiness and pleasure are very fleeting experiences they're not rooted in something original they're just little glimpses that are usually induced from outside of you fulfillment is a much deeper it's a much more permanent state even joy is a much more permanent state balance balance is a very important state right we must walk in balance everything in our body everything in our spirit our whole our brain our chemistry everything wants to consistently move to balance our brain cannot sustain long states of extreme joy extreme bliss yes it can go for a while but then it has to return to balance again and that's how we are that's how nature is that's how everything is everything must be in a state of balance so to find a place where balance becomes your nature where balance becomes your most dominant state of being that is a desirable place to find in your life and then you go on these journeys sometimes the journey of the high where you experience the peaks and sometimes you go into the valleys because you you have to experience some contrasts as well you know some authentic sadness sometimes or even authentic anger all of that is okay as long as your permanent and most dominant state is balanced all right my friends i just wanted to share this with you and also for us to realize that when we hear the word warrior a lot of people think of 
soldiers, weapons, tanks, bombs, violence. The path of the true warrior is to be so pure in all of these qualities and intentions that violent usually is not needed. And the most wonderful, conscious and pure warriors I've met in my life, I've never seen them use violent. They are capable, but I've never seen them use force, most of them. In extreme situations on occasion, but very little. Because every true warrior is honoring this inner journey and that's what they're expressing in the world. It's much more powerful, by the way. Alrighty, have a wonderful, beautiful rest of your day. We love you, we appreciate it, and we'll be back with you again very, very soon. Would you like to get access to exclusive content as well as being part of a community of like-minded people posting, sharing, and connecting on a deeper level? Come join the inspired community on Locals where we share more intimately and privately and do our coffee and truth live streams as well as our Honey Talks show, the only inspired show with Christine Nolan. The inspired community is absolutely uncensored and unfiltered, a place for truth, authenticity, and freedom. Join us now at inspired.locals.com or click on a link in the video description.